part is like, could you um, maybe share a little bit about your experience as part of the LGBTQIA plus community? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm a gay man. I'm married. I have a great husband. We've been married just over three years now. Um, and I mean, every every queer person's stories has some, you know, overlap and some differences. Mm -hmm. um, I was not out in high school. I wasn't sort of ready to acknowledge some of the thoughts or feelings that I was having yet. Uh, so it wasn't probably until college or, you know, in my early 20s that I decided to sort of allow myself to be who I was. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I signed up to like, you know, volunteer and be a mentor for other um, queer high school and college students as part of my grad program. Mm -hmm. And it was really having that opportunity to, to give back. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people in, in the queer community struggle a lot. Yeah. Um, bullying, social isolation, marginalization, and, you know, as a counselor and an educator, now my goal is to hopefully help them rise up and understand that they can, that they can be who they are, unapologetically yeah. who they are. Yeah, for sure. So very grateful, grateful to have great friends, grateful to have a great husband, and yeah, feel incredibly blessed to be where I'm at in life. Like, did you have any like experience with like bullying or anything like that? And if you don't mind like sharing that and like maybe how you were able to overcome that over time? Mm -hmm. I, th I feel like I'm very lucky in that respect. And that's again, why I have such love and empathy for my community. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, like there, because I hadn't acknowledged it because I wasn't sort of um, at that place yet to fully actualize all aspects of my identity. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. I mean, when you're an adolescent and high school, I mean, my gosh, all the things that are happening, yeah. like, you know, our bodies and, you know, how we're experiencing and seeing the world. Um, so yeah, there was, I didn't have any bullying. I okay. played football all through high school and people really didn't expect or think that I was gay and I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't acknowledging those feelings yet. So never experienced any bullying in high school or college. Um, but in life, you know, even in growing up in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. you know, there's been a handful of times just walking, whether it was with a boyfriend or my husband, mm -hmm. that you know, someone walking by or driving by might yell faggot. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, just to hurt somebody. Yeah. Um, and they've been pretty infrequent, but even in the Bay Area, which so many of us look at as just such a wonderful place and you know, a very diverse place mm -hmm. um, to grow up and to be queer, like you certainly risk people either calling you out verbally or physically. Um, and I'm a little larger, so I don't often get as much harassment, possibly because of that. Mm -hmm. But I've certainly come to um, the aid of other people in my community when I hear it in public mm -hmm. because I feel incredibly grateful that I wasn't bullied mm -hmm. so I'm 100% going to be one of those people that's going to stand up for other people when they are bullied and as an educator whenever I can bring these topics up in a class I really want everyone to be thinking about what type of world that they want to help build um, how they would raise and educate their children with these issues because it's a significant problem. I mean, so many people are bullied, so many people are harassed, so many people are victimized in this world still, even in a state and a city and a country that, that is as diverse and open as, you know, the Bay Area, California, and the US. We still have a lot of work. Some of those, their experiences with you, like, was there anything in particular that you remember? I mean, they're so varied. I mean, as a counselor, like I'm, I'm seeing students all day and, and, and we just, it runs the gamut in terms of the type of students I'm seeing. Um, so trans students, mm -hmm. trans students who are at the beginning of their journey, trans students who are at the end of their journey, um, queer students who, same thing, at the beginning of sort of the, coming to terms with or exploring those aspects of their identity. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things, you know, growing up in, in, in the community, it's one of those unique things that, that so many queer people share is that 
uncertainty of the unconditional love of parents. Mm -hmm. So many people grow up just understanding that their parents love and support them and that, that it's, it's a given and it's not ever questioned or doubted. Mm -hmm. In the queer community though, it's, there's growing up with an uncertainty of that. If my parent finds out who I am, will they still love me? Will they support me? Can I still live with them? Will they throw me out? And same thing, I've seen every student across that list where it's students who have been thrown out, um, students have, who have amazingly supportive family members, but so many students are just still in that position of, I'm afraid to tell them. And, and that's always hard um, navigating as a, as a counselor and you know, as someone who is out, because every student has to sort of walk that journey on their own. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I, I see, which is kind of interesting as well with the international students, where I'll have students who grew up in very conservative countries, conservative cultures, very conservative families. And then they come to the US and all of a sudden they begin to see different freedoms here. Um, they might see more representation in media. They might see gay and lesbian couples holding hands. Mm -hmm. On campus, they might see trans students um, everything across that spectrum, being able to walk through um, society with seeming anonymity, um, where they're not confronted on the streets, at least often or at least visibly seen. So it's, it's nice to see, you know, international students being able to come here and witness and start to allow themselves to be free. And, and explore different aspects of who they are, um, who they love, and how that either relates to or might cause conflict with their culture and background. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an incredible role to be part of, both as a counselor and an educator, to, to help students kind of navigate that. If you could provide a brief explanation of DVC's Community of Pride and then your involvement in that community. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty new. It's pretty recent. I think it's in about the last two years or so. And it's really um, sort of the collaboration between our, our Queer Straight Alliance on campus and the faculty club advisor, James Wilson. And, you know, it, the goal is really to provide more resources, support programs and classes that address the needs of our queer students on campus. Um, I've been involved, this will be my second year um, in the fall, where mm -hmm. I've taught courses in psychology aimed at addressing queer issues, part of like a, usually a linked class. So I, along with Professor Wilson, um, both teach, he'll do an English, I'll do a psychology, and we'll be sharing the same students across both of those, where we're sort of bringing in different, uh, whether it's literature or um, you know, different aspects of psychology, especially in, 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 in modern life, mm -hmm. in terms of just addressing queer issues for students. And, you know, we're, we're branching out, we got more time for this coming year mm -hmm. to think about how, to, how do we do more workshops, how do we do more career development, coordinate visits from alumni. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to um, be back to campus in some capacity in the fall mm -hmm. and, and really continue to develop the program. How has DV, DVC progressed like when it comes to aspiring to be like a more inclusive campus? Like, I guess based on like what you're seeing now, has there been like significant pro uh, progress or, you know, is there still more that we can do, you know, just like, as you said, with the Bay Area. Yeah, and, and that's one of the, the projects that we have this coming year is to, to, to continue to like diversify that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been some great work done, like the Pride Alliance created a website um, with resources for students, faculty, staff. We have like an email listserv um, with different information and, and workshops. We've created professional development um, for faculty and staff around um, how to be sensitive to and understand the resources available for um, members of the queer community, uh, pronouns and things like that in class, dealing with our, um, you know, trans students. We had a issue of our statement of solidarity for our trans students and staff with our academic senate. 
and then you know working to make the curriculum more inclusive. I think we were, we're coming up with a um, LGBT or queer studies concentration in our social justice major. So yeah, a lot of good progress has happened. Mm -hmm. um, we have some great achievements that have been made on campus in these last couple of years. And again, just very, very optimistic for um, the direction that we're going. A lot of universities have, the, have these type of resources on campus. Not as many community colleges do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very, very happy and excited to see what we've done and, and optimistic for the next year. Like, uh, what are you hoping students can gain from joining the community of Pride again? Mm. And definitely that, that first word, community. Yeah. Um, like, like I kind of mentioned in terms of un the uncertainty of, of community as you're growing up queer, mm -hmm. um, that fear that you might lose family, the fear that you might lose friends. Um, it's great to have a community of those that understand that um, because they under we understand better the importance of relationships and community and it's it's just such an important aspect of our identity to have that level of social connectedness i think that came to light so much more this last year for all of us as we started to struggle or you know suffer in isolation we're very much social animals mm -hmm. um, and and when you're a social animal who, who who is in danger or in fear of losing some of those connections um, having a community of other people that understand that, that support you and that love you can, can go a long way. And the research uh, that's been done certainly speaks to the value of things like queer straight alliances on campus, um, gay straight alliances in the high schools. Um, the research certainly supports that when you have that sense of community, that, that you're doing better overall um, psychologically in life. So it's, I, what I hope students get out of it is love, community, acceptance, and the understanding that it's okay to love who, who they want and that it's okay to have the feelings that they have and that love is such a wonderful aspect of, of our human experience. It's one of the most wonderful things about being a human being. We all imagine that, that we romanticize that you know, falling in love, um, holding a partner's hand, pushing them to be their best version of themselves, being there to support them. And we should fully embrace and fully accept, accept that without fear, anxiety um, that sometimes surround growing up with a queer identity. Uh, okay, so I guess to close this out. Um, if you have any, you know, last, last words of encouragement for both current and incoming LGBTQIA plus students who are interested in joining the community of Pride, and maybe like thoughts of, or like food for, yeah, food for thought, I guess. Um, yeah, that's a hard one, but I would say kind of in reference to the last one that you're not alone, mm -hmm. um, that you have faculty, staff, other students here that care about you, um, and they want to see you succeed in your goals. And I would say, don't let people who are un unhappy with their own lives make you feel unhappy about yours. And there should be no shame. There should be no fear. There should be no anxiety again about loving who you love. We should be able to walk through life, hold our partner's hands and, and be unapologetically, be unapologetically who we are.